Ooh, what was that? <laughs> My mic fell off the table. You know what? I want to leave that in. That's funny. <laughs> it sounded really funny. Like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I'm going to I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut that in and edit it at the beginning or something. Welcome back to Game Punks after uh, two, two months? Yeah, two months. It's well, been a while. Two months and some change, maybe. Yeah. We're supposed to start back up in June, but we're starting back up in July. Because um, time. <laughs> yeah. Moving is uh, apparently not instantaneous. I, no, it's, I think, it's a process. I miscalculated <laughs> how oh, long well. that was going to be, especially with a uh, child. Exactly. So, you so, know, that on top of having to do dad stuff. Yeah. Also, it took literally the entire month for my internet to not be fucked. Um, mm. I'm going I'm to call out Bell real quick and say, what the fuck? Um <laughs> I mean, are you gonna fuck, install fuck internet that. and not realize that the internet card is no longer good like it worked for a week uh and then it started dropping every five seconds um if, it was fucking ridiculous if saying your isp them, was is videotron was a brag i'd say hey ha, ha, i have videotron uh, but it's yeah. not a brag it's much worse yeah i know well like <laughs> the thing too is like when we were looking for internet i was like it doesn't really fucking matter anyway because bell owns all the fucking lines so even videotron has to go through bell shit you know yeah exactly so like i mean whatever i don't know the internet in canada is a a story and a half it is isps aren't the best here yeah but they're not the best in the states either no they're not they're it's it's hard to have a you know a good isp yeah um, so I guess this is going to be a short sort of catch-up episode. Um, yeah. We're going to scramble uh, for news a little there's bit. A, I guess we could just start by recapping E3, since that <laughs> happened in the month that we were supposed to return, and <laughs> we, <didn't>, yeah. <laughs> we didn't say anything about that would have, it I feel like that would have been a good time to come back, but... Yeah, uh, probably. Oh, well. Uh, we I mean, can catch people up on that. That's if, peak when know, my internet was dropping every five seconds anyway, so... Yeah, well... <laughs> Uh, this is the first E3 year that I've ever sat down and watched all of the major conferences. It's really fun. I like, I, I, I do enjoy, I mean, like, this E3 had, uh, it was kind of an okay one, but, like, a thing you have to keep in mind is that we're on the tail end of this console generation, so, like, yeah, e- there's not much to show anyway. Which um, is something that that I realized uh, pretty late into the uh, Ubisoft panel Mm -hmm. uh when i was like oh the most impressive title you have to show off is a game that we only have a trailer for that's not actual gameplay footage that looks i what game was it i didn't watch the ubisoft one it's the the gods and monsters game the one that's kind of like um greek mythology themed breath of the wild type thing it looks um, very pretty. It's got a very pretty cartoonish art style. Oh, it's yeah. It's got it very, right. very nice graphics. But it's nothing spectacular, you know? And I, I re- once again, that's kind of how I felt about a lot of the announcements, with the exception of Nintendo, which we'll get into. Yeah. Um, but everybody else kind of wasn't bringing their A game. Well, Ubisoft was mostly the Tom Clancy presentation. I think they announced like eight, not even kidding, Tom Clancy games. Yeah, and um, I have to say, I don't give a shit about any of them. I don't no. like Tom Clancy games. I don't. I think Tom Clancy as an author wasn't even that good. So yeah, you know, Splinter Cell. I, I'm I'm itching for a new Splinter Cell game, but we're not we're not doing that anymore. Apparently, like I want a good one. And the it, poor corpse of Tom Clancy. They keep beating it. Keep beating scripts out of them. I guess um, we could start by the the first press conference that i you know watched was the uh i think it's i think yes it was the bethesda conference i I watched the microsoft conference oh Uh, yeah microsoft was first it is true you have Uh, some nice indie titles and that's it it's the standard thing they have they announced their new console starting development i they they didn't say much they were like wow frame rates we've never seen before and then immediately after they were like 120 frames per second and everyone said i, 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 I literally know. could not care less mm-hmm. about a new microsoft console honestly <laughs> i not... i wonder if they're gonna swap it back because you know like 
I feel like I've always been on the wrong end of every console generation, like, except for the 360. Like, I, I had a 360, and that was, like, the killer, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and then the Xbox One and PS4 came out, and it was like, okay, well, I mean, the 360 killed, so why wouldn't the Xbox One kill? And then it's like, oh, honey. oh, oh no, <laughs> oh, boy, oh, and honey, this year. Um, I don't know, Microsoft presented some pretty cool shit, but none of them seemed to be exclusive, mm-hmm. uh, was the thing. Uh, I, f- I don't know how you felt about Fantasy Star Online coming to the West after seven years, but uh, I was excited. I gotta say, honestly, I feel like it might be just a little too late for Western gamers to get into it now. I don't know. Not, not because the community interest isn't there. But because right now we have, like, a glut of, like, massively multiplayer online all types of games. Yeah. And adding a new one into the fold is a risky move. I know that people really love PSO. I think PSO is objectively a great game. But it's a tall order to bring a totally new, like, MMORPG to the West after so many years. Because you're competing with FF14, which is becoming again one of the biggest like mmorpgs of all time in the west if not the biggest and you've always had you have the people who play wow and are stuck to wow and wow just released that new version of the game that's essentially like a a, like a redo of the vanilla original game and Uh, people are into that i don't know i think a lot of people are just kind of swapping around right now waiting for the next big thing and i honestly think fantasy star could have a place for a bit like, I don't think it's going to be a WoW killer or even a f- mm. uh, fucking Final Fantasy fourteen killer. I think it's Final not going to be Fantasy an anything or... killer. Yeah, no, that's it. I think Final Fantasy fourteen has pretty much cemented its place for the next, like, couple of years as one of the big ones. Yeah, I'd um, say so. And then, I but mean, I mean it's, not, it's not a game I play either, you know? Like... A hardcore player base, they will attract. Uh, it's inevitable because everybody who played PSO way back when has fond memories of PSO. People really did like PSO Zero when that came out on the DS for the limited game that it was. Yeah. It was actually quite popular and the servers lasted for a long time. Same with the original PSO. But I'm just, you know, I'm I'm hoping it, it does well because I, I really like Fantasy Star. I like PSO. I think that the series deserves to do well in the West. But I'm I think just, it'll do okay. I'm hoping but, it I'm hoping it goes well enough to justify the next major PSO game coming to the West immediately. Yeah, for sure. You know The main thing that I find weird is that it's literally just North America. Like we're the only ones getting it. Europe's not getting it. That's um, something that I'm also kind of curious about. Like why is that? Is there not enough of a massively multiplayer online community in europe because i don't think that's the case especially everyone i know who plays ff14 exactly everyone who i know who plays ff14 is like mostly in europe yeah a lot of people that i know who are around the uk who are in france they're super into online games and online gaming is big in europe i don't i don't actually i want to say it's arguably got a you know there's there's arguably a lot more representation for certain kinds of online games in europe than there is here in north america Mm-hmm. Uh, because of, I guess, one of, not to say that North America is like, this is the place where people play shooters and Europe is the place where people play RPGs. That's not how it is. It's more like, I don't know. I feel that the European mindset for what they look for in a game is kind of different from North America's and certain games just inevitably do better, especially certain kinds of online games there. Yeah, and I feel like that's a missed opportunity. But I, I guess whatever it must, there must be some you know marketing decision uh, or market like pattern in marketing and advertising that they realized. Yeah. Okay, well this game is not maybe going to succeed as strongly. So, eh. I don't know. But we'll um, yeah, so that was the Microsoft conference. That's some pretty cool stuff. But yeah. I guess the uh, I feel like there was other stuff at the Microsoft conference that looked okay. Gears Five looks like a Gears game. Um, yeah. Oh, I guess there's Halo Infinite, which is coming out eh. on the Scarlet. I'm so whatever, sick. Scarlet I'm box. so sick of Halo. I like. I I, couldn't I don't less. have any. I don't have any affinity for Halo. My boyfriend loves Halo. He's obsessed with it, and he's really good at it. Yeah. I've never cared about Halo. I know the lore is really interesting, and there's like a to lot of a good point. Halo. Halo like, novels and stuff like that. Whatever. I just I could never get into it. Bro. I feel like Killing Master Chief 
three times was enough. Mm-hmm. Let him let him sleep. He, he let deserves the, the rest. And I mean, I I'm gonna tell you right now, Cortana just as an individual, I'm sick of because I own a Microsoft computer, so I don't want to fuck with Cortana ever, no matter what version of her it is. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I guess that was Microsoft. Uh, Next would be the Bethesda conference. That's the first conference I guess I watched fully. Yeah, same. Um, uh, I caught I caught about half. Oh wait, well, Keanu Reeves was at the Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven. That was a good uh, pop off. Yeah, that's that's true. I still gotta say, man, that game looks fucking whack. Uh, <laughs> you can get Keanu Reeves in your game, and I'm still you can't do it, bro. You're not gonna make me play your weird transphobic. I've been Cyberpunk I've been trying game. to be s- skeptical, but I think they might do okay. I don't know. I just, I'm, like, I really I'm, don't want CD Projekt Red to succeed, which is a sick yeah. and mean mentality to have. But honestly, like, fuck everybody who works for CD Projekt Red, especially the people who work on their social media. They're a bunch of pricks and they're shitty. Like, I, this, I don't yeah. want them to find success with their terrible cyberpunk game. I'm just glad that the stupid collector's edition is horrible. It's like, you're, here's your dumb, ableist, transphobic cyberpunk game. You, you know, it's cyberpunk, but without the, you know, the punk part. It's just, it's just a cyber. It's just cyber. I mean, as far as we know, we still don't know. Like, much well, the, they could the do story good. as they far as I'm con- the story as far as I'm concerned is following, I guess, what a lot of the original cyberpunk tabletop followed. But yeah. the original cyberpunk tabletop is a flawed game with some pretty gross mechanics, like the whole "Hey, replacing parts of your body makes you less human, and making you less human makes you experience like you know trauma. body dysphoria and trauma." And I'm like, oh, yeah. pardon. Pardon? What is it about replacing your body parts? You know, the thing that people do already in real life? <laughs> How does that make you less human, exactly? Yeah. You know, if you were talking about replacing parts of your brain with a computer, I'd get it. But you're talking about replacing limbs with, like, a cybernetic mm-hmm. limb. Please, fuck off. <laughs> like, I get it. Phantom arm pain and phantom leg pain exists. Fuck off with that shit. <laughs> they made a whole Metal Gear game about it. Yes, they truly and truly did. <laughs> I wow, that didn't even occur to me that that was like a joke I could make. Uh, Rocket the punch. But yeah, so that looked okay, I guess. Keanu, I love you. You're a very good boy. He seems gla- so happy to be. I'm up glad there. that you're happy. Yeah, I'm glad you're happy to be in a video game that you seem to be passionate about. Because I know you don't do projects unless you're interested in them. So that's cool. I'm just I don't I don't know if this is it for me. I'm definitely not gonna play the game. I'm just not interested. I'll I'll come back to you with how it is because yeah I, you you <laughs> let me know what I'm you gonna think deep of that. dive and I I think I'm actually gonna stream that one as like an experience. <laughs> I'm gonna tr- I'm, I'll trust your take on the game when when it comes out. I'll yeah. I'll take you I'll take you for your word on it. But as of now, I'm not impressed. That's um, fair. Okay, Bethesda. There we go. The real the real E3 MVPs according to yeah. Todd Howard only. Um, <laughs> so Todd I just Coward, I guess I'll, the biggest liar. I'll pref- I'll preface this by saying this is my Bethesda E3 drinking game. Take a shot every time Todd Coward tells a lie. Take a shot every time they joke about the media shit show that was Fallout 76. And take a jo- uh, take a shot every time you feel as if what's being shown simply will not be a- as good as it looks. Hold on, hold <laughs> and, on. You, you're forgetting take a shot every time Bethesda man says, Yeah! Now, I mentioned that later on. That was posted right before the Bethesda conference started. It's, what follows uh, is the string of tweets that I had. But I guess there's the new Mikami game from Tango. Yeah. Looks really very, very good. Very good, actually. Quite impressive. Uh, and uh, the, the thing that got me about uh, the Bethesda conference is all these CG trailers looked really, really good. The CG trailers looked great. It's almost like CGI technology is really impressive and it's yeah, come such like a long way. You can way. do anything with it, like make a game <laughs> look way better than it might actually be forever. Which is something that Bethesda is uh, very guilty of. Yeah. Um, so I guess, uh, yeah, the Tango software game looks really good. Mm-hmm. Um, Shinji Mikami rarely fails to make impressive games. He's pretty consistent, in my opinion. So that's not... I don't think we have to worry about that. The fact that Bethesda's publishing it, whatevs. Yeah. Whatev- I mean, whatever, bro. Just, here's your money, <laughs> make the game. Yeah. It, better, it better hit the numbers. Exactly. That's, all, well, that's all a publisher hopefully. is, you know? Yeah, hopefully that uh, goes okay. But, uh, let's see. The, ah, yes. The Elder Scrolls Online. The one yeah. good Bethesda game. 
No, Blades. Oh. Blades is the other good. <laughs> oh no. We're not going to talk about that right yeah, now. Yeah, we're going to talk about Blades. <laughs> let's huh? let's let's leave that for later. Uh, Bethesda ha- is releasing just like constant, constant updates for online the last couple months. Somerset earlier on in the year, Elsewhere was just here, and now they have a new set coming out. Yeah. Um, as they're always, like, holy shit, we're getting defeated by Final Fantasy fourteen. I, I have to say, it's the one Bethesda's Elder Scrolls Online is the one online game I wish I was playing right now. Because it's good. I don't it's it's quite good, actually. I don't and know. And it's it there's there's just something visceral in my mind about wanting to play a game set in Vardenfell again. Like I don't wanna have to boot up Morrowind every time I wanna play a game in Vardenfell. I love Morrowind, yeah. it's one of my favorite fucking games of all time but it's a garbage game it's so old well it's not garbage it's not as it's not as mechanically it's garbage broken going as back. people think but going back to it is harder than other games and i don't want to have to play oblivion because nah. um i'm not a yeah. huge fan no it's not it's a... but as, as somebody who's spent like the last month just kind of diving back into skyrim because i love that fucking game to death every time i see a trailer for the elder scrolls online i'm like nah, nah. Oh, and every every time I think even a little deeply about Elder Scrolls lore, I just like a little bit of cum dribbles out because I fucking love that <laughs> series. God damn it, I fucking love it so much. But Bethesda, I you keep letting me down. And so Elder Scrolls Online, as always, looks fucking impressive. Keep up the good work, dudes, working on that. Uh, yeah, I guess we could talk about the way too excited fucking man in the crowd, yeah. uh, who is clearly a fucking industry plant. Clearly. No, 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 no. Bethesda just lets fans in. He's just straight up a Bethesda mark. Because uh, how oh E3 works is usually only the people who work at the companies can be there and like a couple of VIPs. But Bethesda is just like, hey, come hang out, random drunk people. Well, and those guys were people... just a little too fucking excited for what too, is too ultimately going everything. to be a piece of shit game like Fallout 76. I think Fallout 76 was the only one he didn't say yeah for. There was, like, one game that was... Uh, oh, no, it was uh, Captain... Uh, Captain it was uh, Keen. Captain... Captain Keen? Keen? Captain Keen. Captain Bad. Uh, looks like shit. Captain, uh, why did you make this a mobile game? Yeah, Captain, could did you have not just made another Captain Keen game instead of this mobile trash? Captain Keen's <laughs> son is Doom Guy, by the way. Oh, my fucking God. Yeah. So, stupid. technically, the kid in the mobile... Stupid. The, the kid or one of the kids in the mobile game is Doom Guy. It's fucking, it's fucking stupid. <laughs> fucking Bethesda. So for God days, the fuck motherfuckers. Uh, but yeah, so that guy was way too fucking excited for a bunch of disappointing games. Elder Scrolls Blades is on Switch. Who gives a fuck? That Why? game is awful. That was the weirdest thing. I don't understand. That game is fucking terrible. Why the hell would you ever want to play it on Switch? People barely want to play it on mobile. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Yeah. Why Commander would you Keen... make Fallout seventy six a uh, battle royale? Why would Why would Bethesda do a lot of things? But you I know what? I forgot about the battle royale. The Fallout seventy six stuff uh, that they announced is pretty cool. Like, I'm not going to buy the game. I'm not defending the game in the state that it was released in. I am just saying that it's good that they're doing good by the people who did buy the game. Like, some people own that game and are still playing it because, like, whatever reason, right? So, like, I feel just that they deserve to get the, the a thought... video game in their video game. Yeah, I mean, they get NPCs. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, like, a story... Like, I don't know. storyline! The bare I, minimum that a game fucking needs! I am by no means trying to defend <laughs> Fallout 76 in the state that it released in, but I'm just saying I'm glad that whoever... The sorry saps that were gifted this game or, like, just straight up thought it was going to be a good game. I, um, I, ha- I have they're to getting, fucking... They're getting what they paid for, maybe. Possibly. I have to fucking laugh at some of the shit Todd was saying. They were like, oh, we have such a friendly, great opening, uh, like, open-minded community running, and we're so happy to have you there. Ban Bitch! People no, you don't! people for being at the game. You ban people for being fucking too good at the game. You had to mass ban a group of people for homophobically harassing a bunch of other people. Like, please don't pretend that your community isn't full of toxic shit stains, you fucking liars. For God's sakes. <laughs> Please stop telling lies, Todd Howard. Stop lying. And fucking uh, the Commander Keen. I guess all I have to say is 
great way to introduce a fucking old IP on the absolute wrong platform how, how with the absolute wrong everyone. gameplay. Yeah. It's it's a pity too cuz it looks really cute. I think they put a lot of effort into the aesthetic of the game. Yeah. But the gameplay looks like fucking shit, so I'm the not The fact going that to it's on mobile it. is an insult. I It's a it's a total it's you've killed any excitement I could have had for it. Yeah. Cuz the announcement came and I was like, "Oh cool, a new Captain King game." That's that thing that I like played once, I think. Yeah, and, and I like, liked it. It's fun. And, it's oh, cute. look, the, the style is cute. It is like a Saturday morning cartoon. And then the phone comes up and you're like, oh. No, thanks, bro. <laughs> uh, you tried. Uh, you Rage 2. You didn't even try. Rage 2, don't really care about. Uh, yeah, Rage looks like shit. Rage is I not mean, a good series. Like, it looks like the aesthetic that I would be into, kind of, but it's not. I'm Nothing about it interests me, I just, even it's, a little it's, bit. It's edgier, less bright Borderlands. Yeah. That, that's it. it it just it feels very borderlandsy it feels very like i don't know where it, it feels like it's trying too hard uh wolfenstein youngblood looks pretty good that looks uh, fucking good i mean it's, those wolf i'm we, we can just we can just let them work on those games it's good yeah I, they, they do good they're doing all right uh can't really fuck up killing nazis i mean you can but they're not doing you know. uh those two french blokes from arcane software were cute yeah, I, I like them. They seem they seem funny and friendly, like yeah. nice like nice men. They were good men. They were. Uh, they were I like them. Men. And uh, Ikumi Nakamura just won yeah. everyone's heart. She is probably the best fucking thing about that entire presentation. I think just, she uh, was she was top three E three moments for sure. Clearly, a woman who was totally fucking nervous to go up there. Oh yeah, completely afraid but totally killed it won the crowd over with i don't know just being genuine with them yeah I mean, it didn't people feel are, like people aren't used to a bethesda conference where somebody is being real yeah it didn't <laughs> feel like a robot coming up and being like here is video game give money it was like we're, hey spooky. we're developing lots of exciting content for you uh on all major media platforms have you something, seen any of it streaming. no i just make decisions yeah no what? uh so this bitch it just no thanks. Oh, and that I holy. Mean, she was, uh, okay, uh, Ghostwire Tokyo looks amazing. She was Ghostwire the art director yeah, on really uh, Okami and mm-hmm. uh, Bayonetta, which is uh, two really, you know, I'm the in best? there. They're, the best, yeah, I the love the best because they are objectively. Yeah, they're so fucking well, good. Okami, Okami goes on a little long, but I mean, you know, whatever. I will literally play hours of Okami. I do not care how long that oh, game man, goes man, on for. You, there is hours to be played. I, I like Okami so much. I do I, too. I, just, I can play Okami for years. It's 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 long. Uh, Bethesda it's fucking like to suck its own dick yeah. with this. We are Bethesda. The people are Bethesda. No, man, Bethesda those, is a fucking company. The individuals who work for you are people. But Bethesda is a fucking were, company. Please. Those segments were so out of place and unnecessary. And there was like four of them. And it was like, okay, we're just gonna. Like, I'm fucking done. With Fallout your... 76 means so much to me. Yeah, because they paid your bills. Yeah, any anything means a lot to you when fucking puts food on your table and clothes your child. You know, like fuck, please stop pretending that corporations are people. Individuals yeah. are fucking people. Individuals work for corporations. I just imagine like, but the... corporations are not people. I just imagine someone behind the camera holding a gun up, being like, "Don't say anything about the crunch." Yeah, basically. <laughs> like, basically. Hey, hey, hey! Say something nice. We'll, we'll put you in this thing at the E3, and you'll be on the TV, and everyone will see your face, and you get to tell your family, "Hey, look, it's me." But I swear to God, if you say anything about the unpaid, <laughs> unpaid holidays, unpaid overtime, the crunch, yeah. we're, we're, mm, just remember, we're little Jimmy needs a new pair of shoes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, and then Christmas of course ham the. Or uh, not. The pretty harsh, uh, pretty harsh, we'll see you in hell, Bethesda kind of closed their fucking conference, the whole conference with, we'll see you in hell, is, I think, the most Bethesda thing they could have fucking said. Yeah. See but you in hell, folks. to be fair, Doom Eternal. We're gonna leave you high and dry. Doom, Doom Eternal, Eternal looks really looks good. great. That collector's edition uh, has won me over, so I am now, next year, I have the Doom Eternal collector's edition again, so I can wear that stupid helmet. <laughs> that's, that's how I roll, and I got to get the Final Fantasy VII remake collector's edition because Cloud on that bike is good. Yeah. Oh, totally. Uh, let's see. 
what was the next? I guess the next was the Ubisoft conference. Yeah, which I didn't. I, I watched oh, like a summary yeah. of. No, uh, no, actually, next was Devolver. It was Devolver? Ah, I mean, and they did I, good. I, it's Devolver. I don't know what can I say about them that I like hasn't the, been said before. The, the RoboCop bit was great. Um, I like. I like that the Devolver conferences have fucking continuity. Yeah. <laughs> like there's a storyline. Yeah, you gotta follow it. There's the deep Devolver, Devolver lore. lore. Yeah, I fucking like that. It's it was it was very entertaining and it was it made watching it all the more worth it than it already was. House of so, the Dead was the biggest fucking surprise. And yeah. I love that after that trailer she's like, This is a real thing that is really happening for real. You can order it online now to your house or arcade. It is real and happening. And you're like, Yes. Thank you. <laughs> But I can't tell if that's sarcasm or not. Is this real? <laughs> like, please. I need it to be real. Yeah, so they did a good job, and all of the games they were putting out look, as always, impressive, both on a technical and aesthetic level. The gameplay looks addictive and fun, sometimes punishing. Uh, it looks good. It's yeah. Devolver are a great publisher, and they put out great games. They do. And they have a gr- such a great sense of humor about themselves. Fall and it's not for good. for a company that could easily kind of go like the kind of cheap and easy like Deadpool way, you know, like the yeah. Deadpool humor. They yeah. they actually go for some clever, you know, commentary on the industry. Yeah, and on the way the industry presents itself, and I I admire them for that. Did I you think did you like the 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 bit where it was just a Nintendo Direct the whole time? Yes, I fucking absolutely. Love that. that was um, really fucking good. The RoboCop intro is good. They're going for Terminator next year. Speaking of Terminator, he's in every single fucking game this year, by the way. Yeah, what is up with that? That's kind of crazy. It's the most egregious, like, marketing push for a new movie I've ever seen in video games. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. It's fucking very strange. Uh, okay, so I guess... Uh, Square Enix was next. Yeah, Square uh, Enix. Square oh no, Enix. Ubisoft. Ubisoft was, and then oh, Square yeah, Enix Ubisoft. was that evening. Well, I mean, Ubisoft uh, was Tom Clancy, Tom Clancy, Tom Clancy. Rainbow Six Quarantine looks like garbage and a generic zombie game. I don't care. Yeah, um, uh, I, I, one of the things I said: so many boring and generic war and shooting games, all of which I'm sure are in no way political. <laughs> yeah, not even a little bit political. Not even. Did a we ever talk about bit. that fucking thing where uh, the Division Two beta came out and they were like, "Tomorrow, find out what a real government shutdown looks like." Yep. And then yep. they're like, "We're so sorry." Excuse me, you motherfuckers. So you... <laughs> fucking. Uh... I got one of my favorite fucking moments for the Pentagon, uh, the Pentagon reveal. Did did you did you see that in the whole thing? There, there when they're talking about the Division Two having like a new kind of those like those new episodes to to kind of go into. I no, I have not been keeping okay. up with anything okay. about. Okay, so they're they're showing like the Division Two will have story episodes like missions, right? And they're gonna take you outside of DC and bring you into like these different kind of locations. And there was this great moment where they're like, episode T will bring to you the Pentagon. And then there's just like a complete dead fucking silence for like a full 10 seconds. And it was the longest 10 seconds I've ever heard. And then there's just like some delayed clapping. And it was clear they wanted everybody to go like, ah, ah, holy shit, whoa, like the fucking Bethesda guy. Yeah. And that there was not, not what they fucking got. <laughs> it was really funny. So that was good. Um, too much live I, music at the Ubisoft thing, too. Yeah, it was I mean, like we don't need to do this anymore. This I is had to like kind of so laugh. 2000. Like of Assassin's Creed, sure has some nice music that I don't care about. Like, I mean, <laughs> doesn't it all sound the same? I can't. It, it there's no does. track that stands out in Assassin's Creed to me. I, I, Assassin's Creed is good for many things. The series is not known for its music. Uh, and I don't know why they thought that that was, like, the way to go. The Just Dance thing, as always, very well choreographed, super cute. Kind of out of place. Weird. Don't care. You know, kind of like random access humor that was funny in, like, 2010 and never afterwards. Uh, like, whatever, guys. Uh, The Division is getting a movie with, like, Jake Gyllenhaal and, uh, Jessica Chastain, and it's being directed by David Leach? Which is 
really like the most impressive cast and crew you ca- you could have hired for this movie. So that's pretty impressive. It's probably going to suck because it's fucking the division and the division's not interesting. But, you know, I like go Jake kill, Gyllenhaal and I like go, David Leach. Go kill those 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 working class citizens. Yeah, that's go kill them. Basically They're trying is. not to die, kill them. Uh, you play plus. Uh, everybody's got their subscription plus service now. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't. You can't. I'm not buying into the Stadia shit yet. I'm sorry. Show me that it fucking works, and well, show you me play, that you play is a is less of a streaming service, I think, and more of a like. Here's your subscription. It's kind of like Xbox Live Gold, where like you get free mm. games. Or you get to play the games for free oh, as long as like you have the subscription. Games. Gross. Yeah, well, that's it. <laughs> that's why you might as well just get the Games Pass on Micros- on Xbox. Honestly. Or that's, PS Plus. I, I Which is how Stadia just, should like, work, but it's not so weird. I mean... See, like, like Symphony like of the to, Night is free right now on Xbox Live Gold. I like to own my games. Mm-hmm. You know? I like to own my games. I, I, like <clears> to, I like to feel as if my money wasn't wasted. Yeah, but I mean, if... <sighs> I, I find if it's, like, something like, say you want to check out Rainbow Six uh, Quarantine, whatever, right? Yeah. <clears throat> so you pay $2, you go play, like, an hour, and then you cancel your subscription. Mm-hmm. You got everything you're going to get out of the game. You don't need that spot on your owned membership, and you only pay $2, you know? I, I yeah. Like, I find for that it's really good. It's the equivalent now of being able to rent a game. Yes, exactly. Uh... Roller Champions. Uh, looks good. I mean, people have been playing it. They said, hey, it's interesting. Roller uh, Champions. The Roller Champions. The uh, the roller derby game that Ubisoft Montreal developed. That everybody was excited about. And then they played it and they're like, yeah, so it's okay. Did you see that? No. It's 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 the It was the last thing Ubisoft announced. Uh, apart from Gods and Monsters. They showed a trailer for it and it's like... A roller derby game. And it's... I guess they're trying to push it as, like, a new multiplayer kind of competitive sports game that, like, they'll do as, like, an eSport. Oh, yeah, okay. I yeah. See. It, it I looks good, and it apparently plays nice. It's just kind of like, okay. It exists. It's good. I like, mean, it plays it's... Well. It, it's, uh... It's the only attempt at a roller derby game that I know of. Yeah, and I mean it. It looks fun. People have been playing the demo. They said it's it's good. All right. Well, uh, so if it that's works. all right. I mean, let's go lesbians. Uh, I guess. Yeah. Um, and uh, the new Ubisoft Quebec game, Gods and Monsters. I mean, I spoke about it earlier, but it's Greek mythology, Breath of the Wild, with like a really really nice, cartoony kind of aesthetic that I think suits a Greek mythology setting nicely because it's suitably. I guess, suitably full of personality, but also kind of teeming with, like, the the mysticism and magic that is kind of Greek lore. So that's cool. Uh, looks interesting. Hopefully it's not bad. It, it is coming out on Switch, so I will get to play it, which is nice. Uh, but it looks impressive. Uh, hopefully the trailer is just, you know, something that I can feasibly see as comparable to the game. <laughs> uh, what else we got? Ah, yes, here we go. Uh, so this is uh, Square Enix. Uh, lots of stuff. I mean, Final uh, Fantasy VII remake getting like some proper gameplay. Yeah, Tifa's there. I mean, I guess one of the big things that happened while we were away was that. Oh yeah, Final Fa- Fantasy, Final Fantasy VII, VII remake is getting <laughs> lots of fucking ads and shit and promotion now. Yeah, I, forgot, uh, I thought we did a podcast. I don't think we that, did. I think I think either. we might have just missed it. Yeah. Um it looks good. Um it looks interesting. There's stuff in it that I'm kind of worried about, mostly about how the game is being divided. Um, um but I the mean, gameplay yeah. looks it, good. I think the division's going to be fine. Of the game, I mean not like the game. The yeah, game. yeah, yeah, the game. <laughs> the, what are you saying about the division, the game that's not political? It's a good game. Excuse it's, me while I go cash those paycheck. <laughs> and it's absolutely not political in any way. No. Neither um, are we. But yeah, um, <laughs> the FF7 remake looks impressive. Hopefully the whole game isn't just Midgar. 
I think the first episode will probably only be Midgard, but... I don't know. See, that's where I don't know how I feel about it. Yeah, but Midgar's like a big chunk, isn't it? At well, I mean, part. in hindsight, not as big as most people would think, actually. Well, I'm playing through it now, so I'll be able to... I mean, Midgar... I'll be able to answer that <laughs> in once, like a Once week. you get out of Midgar, there's a lot more game left, and mm-hmm. uh, so much more game that I think maybe, like, the... I don't know. I'm thinking, like, if you're going to divide the game up, Midgar, and then you exit Midgar, and you do, like... I don't know, some of the earlier the earlier missions in the proper game, and you stop at a certain point, and then the second game will end with the 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 city of the ancients, like the lost city where um, Aerith is killed. Yeah. And then the third game would be the conclusion. Uh, but they might do it in four parts. I don't know. It depends, like, the pacing, and, like, it depends on a lot of things that we don't know. No, exactly. You know? I'm, I'm. That's my my concern. I'm not yeah. worried. I'm, you know, slightly concerned by that. But I think it'll be all right. I think. I think there's going to be like years between games too, which is more my concern. Is like the length mm. between uh, games. Yeah, I'm wondering what the development cycle is going to be like for those. Um, I don't yeah. know if maybe we're going to be seeing one, you know, at the tail end of every year. So that, you know, maybe by 2023 or something, we've got the last one in. Yeah. But, mm, hopefully it's okay. It looks fun. I mean, the the gameplay looks good. You can play as Tifa. Tifa is good. You can play as her. Tifa's you can there. play as my punch wife. I love her. I'm so her. happy. I Protect want her to beat her. me the fuck up. Sim word. Song word. Please, just kill get that, me. Get that limit break right on my face. Yes, absolutely. No, I, I love Tifa. She's one of my favorite characters in gaming. And I'm happy to see that she looks perfectly good and that her breasts are a good size. They are pretty. <laughs> they are. This is a good sized pair of breasts. They're legitimately... And anybody who says otherwise has never seen a boob. They're legitimately huge. Like. Those are big boobs, As bro. they is. Yeah. Like, I don't. Any bigger would feel weird and a little... Uh, like, I know the game has a cartoonish, like, feel and stuff, but I feel like that would... I don't know. I don't know. Maybe the original FF7 did, but this one's uh, a little yeah. less anime, a little well, more... Well, like I said, the yeah. original FF had fucking polygon limitations, which is... Exactly. Know, which is why her boobs ended up being Your boobs like, can either be chest. huge or nothing, yeah. Her entire chest is breasts in the original game. And we have game. to give her boobs. She also so looks like fucking Popeye. So Well, like... they all did, yeah. Yeah, where are their giant forearms? What the yeah, fuck? It's so unoriginal to the source material. It's not accurate. Come on. So anyway, that's a stupid argument, and people who are arguing that have literally never seen a breast in their life before. And besides, there's um, plenty of fan art with a variety of boob yeah. sizes. Just go... On, yeah, just go, go on fucking rule, your knob over there. Go on rule thirty four, fucking Dan Buru or something, and polish your fucking penis. Yeah, to one of those pieces. If that's of art. the only thing you need, like just yeah, go, please. Because like, take your masturbation somewhere else. Play the video um, game the way it needs to be. A whole bunch of RPGs that have never been released in the West are getting released now. Yeah, uh, I don't know what the fuck the last remnant is, but it looks good. Uh, it's a game I have literally never heard of before. Uh, but it seriously looks like something I want to play, uh, which is dope. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I don't remember seeing this. Okay. I think I brushed it off a little bit, maybe. Or I left the room or something. I don't know. I don't remember <laughs> seeing any of this. It kind of came quickly. Cool. They just showed cool. a trailer for it. It looks good. It looks very, very good. It has monster hunty vibes, but it's clearly not that. It looks a little mm-hmm. like a Muso. Yes, that's it, that's the thing. It's like it's kind of like a an action RPG Muso kind of thing. Yeah, but with and giant it looks monsters. Really fun. It looks really, really fun. Huh. Um, and yep. uh, Outriders, uh, another bog standard, shitty looking post apocalyptic shooter with zero fucking identity. Uh, I have no interest in Outriders. It looks like fucking crap. Oh yeah, I fu- yeah no, I remember this now. Like I'm not, um, I'm not fucking interested in this bull it, shit. And like, especially it was just a CG trailer again. Yeah, uh, looks like kind of like garbage. Cool. 
I guess. I, I love your shitty pastel Mad Max games. You know, like, fuck this. Yeah. Um, the Avengers game. Uh, so this has been something that's been in the pipeline for a long time. Uh, it uh, was rumored, I think, like, a couple of months ago we talked about the... Uh, yeah, the them, po- them possibly revealing kind of yeah. more details about it. So anyway, uh, it looks... It's from IDOS. Mm-hmm. Um, it looks... Oh, no, not IDOS, but Crystal Dynamics, uh, who are basically IDOS to me. Um, but they're the people who do the the new uh, Tomb Raider games, which are good games. Um, the one thing that worries me about this is it looks a lot more similar to a superhero game from, like, the pre-Batman Arkham Asylum era yeah, than anything else. Yeah, isometric... Uh... Yeah, kind of, yeah, iso- isometric action platformers with, like, you know, lots of kind of big set pieces. Well, I mean, it looks like the ultimate, participate in. ultimate Alliance games. Yeah, prior. but those have a new game coming out, and they're good. Like, I don't know, like, Ult- Ultimate Alliance 3 is coming out on Switch, and it looks interesting. They've kind of changed up how those plays. This looks like, you know, like an Incredible Hulk game that Sega would have made or something to tie in with the movie. It looks like a movie tie-in. Mm. I don't know. It, I think it looks fine. Vis- well, visually, it looks fine. I mean, the gameplay. Looks yeah, no, I, but I, I still, I think the gameplay looks fine too. Because like those are fun couch co-op games. Um, like I, I don't know. I think they can. I, I mean, think once, they can again, once again, I, I, I hope it's good. I the narrative seems interesting. It kind of looks like they're doing it this. Sort of touches on yeah. Infinity War, but not really. Well, it doesn't really look like it, it, it doesn't look like Infinity War. It looks more like they're doing kind of like a storyline where okay, so Captain America is dead and um like people people don't trust the Avengers anymore because they failed to stop a major disaster from occurring or in Wait, some we... manner were directly responsible for it occurring. And so the public's trust in the Avengers has been shattered. It reminds me of like many storylines that have happened in the comics where the public loses faith in the superhero organization and the organization breaks up and they have to get to get back together again to fight a new threat. And I mean, that's fine. The cast is certainly an impressive cast. I think they've done a good job kind of casting actors that can portray these roles. Well, wait, are you not talking about what are you talking about right I'm now? I'm talking about the Avengers game, not Marvel Ultimate Alliance. Hold on a fucking second. Do you know what I'm talking about? No. M- Marvel's Avengers for, like, AAA consoles developed by Crystal Dynamics. I'm not talking about oh Marvel my Ultimate God. Alliance 3 The Black Order. I don't know what the fuck this is. Okay. Hold on, let me watch this trailer real quick. Because <laughs> I didn't know about this. I thought the... No, I Marvel Ultimate Alliance I'm 3 The so Black confused. Order is perfectly fine. It's fun yeah, to play and okay, it looks I, good. I like Marvel Ultimate Alliance, so I have no problems with that series. Uh, and that game looks good. And yes, it is definitely couching on Infinity War because it's doing its own little version of the Infinity Saga. Which is fine because the other Ultimate Alliance games and the X-Men Legends games, which are the same series, uh, always wow. kind of did like, this is the big storyline. Okay, so I did see this Avengers thing at the E3 thing, but I it's... thought it was, uh, I thought Ultimate Alliance 3 was this. I didn't no. catch I didn't catch the end credit scene. I was just like, oh, it's the Ultimate Alliance 3 thing. I don't really need to watch it. It's fine. Oh, Bubby, no. The Ultimate Alliance 3 thing looks fun. Yeah. Well, this that's what I thought you were bad. talking about. Yeah, this is this is the one that everyone was complaining about, where they're like, they don't look like the the movie people. I mean, that's, like, of that course I, they don't. That I don't fucking care about. What yeah. I care about is that this game kind of looks like it's going to be a pre-Arkham superhero yeah. game. Yeah. And that's worrisome, because okay. we've just had a really good Spider-Man game. We've just had three really good Batman games. We've had some great superhero fighting games from Nether Netherrealm with the two Injustice games, and we have Ultimate Alliance three coming out. This game needs to do a lot more if it wants to distinguish itself as something special. Mm-hmm. And I know they're trying to go well, for like a big the, it's like Uncharted I, but with superheroes. I think the thing. fact that I got it confused mm-hmm. with Ultimate Alliance three says a lot to how uh how much it doesn't really stand out. Yeah. It, it's because I just, just brushed it impressed. off as like a story trailer for Ultimate Alliance Three. Yeah, and like left the room because I was like, I don't really care. I'm gonna play the game anyway. <laughs> like, huh? Like that looked disappointingly mediocre. 
for a game that's been teased for a couple of years that they've been talking about for a lot, they're like, yeah. oh, C- Crystal Dynamics is making their big Avengers game. And I'm like, I'm wondering what the fuck this is going to be. And then I see it and I'm like, ah! Is there any gameplay of it? Oh, there's a bit. There's a bit. It looks okay. Oof, this... It's, it is the most oh. okay looking game. It looks like Spider-Man 2. It looks like it yeah. plays like Spider-Man 2. No, it, it looks like it plays like the Incredible Hulk for like the fucking, you know, Xbox 360 yeah. that Sega published. Or like that Wii Captain America game. You know? Oh, you like can, that's you what can it looks shoot like. shoot people as Black Widow. The animation looks fine though. Like the, No, the graphics are perfectly yeah, good. The voice good. acting and cast is fine. The storyline it's fine. But the gameplay looks like it's going to be very... The gameplay it looks, looks like it's going to be a Tomb Raider game. Yeah, but in, like in the worst possible yeah. way. Because those games are actually kind of good. Is that Taskmaster? What's this yeah, Taskmaster, Taskmaster seems to be the antagonist of the game. Yay! He can read all your moves. Yeah, he can. And he is the antagonist of the new Black Widow movie, which is kind of cool. Oh, that's nice. I'm excited for that. Uh, people are saying he's being played by David Harbour, which is actually pretty good casting um because he's in that movie but anyway that's kind of disappointing uh but hopefully it'll be something worth talking about later on i guess when it comes out uh and nobody talks about it we'll know (laughs) Um, yeah but um it's up to this point that i decided so far there's nothing that i've seen that's really mm, you know Deathloop this. looks pretty cool, but that was Bethesda too, I think. Exactly, Deathloop looks okay. Yeah, uh, like, again, it was all CG trailers, so yeah, exactly. Like, no, no gameplay. Suda fifty one announced that excited. No More Heroes three is coming finally. Yeah, like a proper No More Heroes three, which yeah. is cool. So I'm into it. Um, and uh, yeah, I guess, I guess on to Nintendo. So the big fucking Nintendo news. We finally that's got an Animal Crossing. Insane. We have two new fighters for Smash, and they both look very fun. Now, a lot well, of technically people technically are... we have we have one, two, three, four, five, six in total. Big brain, big brain. You're big, big brain. brain smarty. You you answered the way that I wanted to answer. Uh, that hero character from Dragon Quest not expected. Not expected, Very and a, a pleasant surprise for me because I fucking love Dragon Quest. I yeah. love the shit out of those games, and because Dragon Quest Eleven, with the reorchestrated score, the not MIDI score, is yeah. coming to the fucking Switch soon, it's I coming. cannot fucking wait to play this shit, and I, I love Dragon Quest. Dragon Quest Eight is one of my favorite JRPGs of all time. It's one of the best fucking games ever made, period. And... Dragon Quest is huge in Japan. So it should have seemed like this was inevitable. But I just, I guess that they ne- they wouldn't do it because people in the West are kind of not crazy about Dragon Quest. But with Eleven coming to the Switch, and with like Dra- Japan just being so big about Dragon Quest as it always has, yeah. I, I should have figured it was inevitable, but I, I never saw it coming. I, I didn't see it really coming. Happy. And it, like, I had a big pop off, and no, like, no one in the audience did. And I was like, oh, yeah, it's because it's in the West, and no one has any idea. Yeah, no, that's what looks- these people are fucking dope and then people in the west got their we got ours ones. yeah oh, they, boy. they got theirs because fucking, i did not i like i wanted it but i never expected it like i, I did not see it coming at all when i started hearing a little more about nintendo and microsoft collaborating on shit yeah i was like hmm i wonder what you know what conversation got them talking about further collaboration and i thought Maybe it's because they've put Banjo in Smash. And sure enough. Sure enough. This is exactly what has happened. Banjo The gag they did for it was really good. Yeah, it was brilliant. A uh, great reveal trailer. Uh, aping on an already pretty great reveal trailer. Um, now the rare gang is all here. Yeah. Whole and squad's we, there. And no Conquer, because fuck Conquer. We don't talk he's about Conker. He's a stupid bitch, and his game he was, is bad. Oh, I was going to say he was never on a Nintendo console, but I'm oh, he was. a dumb bitch. Yeah, he was. He was. Know, it's just bad for Conker's a day. bad for a day is only funny to people who last heard a joke in 1997. <laughs> also, who have bad taste in video games. The hitboxes yeah. on all, like, uh, I, everyone I, I that ever defends this game, I'm like, when's the last time you actually played it? 
And they're like, yeah. oh, like, you know, when I was like a kid and I was like, yeah, that's why. That's why now, you're defending it. Go back and play it now. It's horseshit. Controversial opinion. I'd say the same thing about some of the Banjo games. Because uh, I have I have extremely I, controversial mixed opinions I, on I will agree with you. I'll, I'll defend Banjo, but we, uh, me and my friend played through the first one recently. And the first couple of levels, real fun endgame shit is such bullshit. Click Clock Woods is probably the most infuriating video game level I've played in fucking years. Um, I, I, I just, I don't, I don't think those games have aged well. And while they've not aged as fucking poorly as DK64, because honestly, fuck that game and all its children. Um, and fuck the DK crew. Uh, I have to say, some of the Banjo games are a little rough to go back to. Yeah. Especially, ba- in my opinion, Banjo Tooie, a game that should have been more polished, yeah, feels no, Banjo much feels less horrible. polished than the first. Banjo Tooie yeah, feels horrible. Not to you know, not, not as to, bad as Nuts and Bolts, though. True. I mean, not to use a game journalist word, but the game feel is bad. <laughs> the, the game feel big bad. Yeah, it's it's not fun. Uh, I I just I don't enjoy make playing an easy games. mode. I don't like collectathons. I guess is what I'm getting. Yeah, at. I, I enjoy not... collectathons a fair no- amount, but like I can also understand where your sentiment is coming from, because um, like I said, the those end game levels in even the first banjo are not fun. They're tedious. Um, you falling off the top of that tree because you fucking misstepped a bit, and uh, it it. it mm. Yeah. Just... Anyway, yeah. There was like it, it's still pretty recent. The playing this with my friend <laughs> and like it was just the wounds are two fresh. hours. Yeah, two hours of like trying to get a thing and just keep doing the same fucking mistakes. And you're like, <laughs> I, I, we need to stop. I super hate this. <laughs> yeah, we need to stop. It's tarnishing my love for this game. Yeah. Uh, so Benjo looks like he's gonna be fun. His gameplay looks awesome. Yeah. Uh, and I mean. He deserves to be in Super Smash Brothers. It's, it's, you know, he's a big enough icon for Nintendo, especially for the polygonal era of gaming. Yeah, he, like he could have been there. He was responsible for, for the Bros. sales 1. of many an N sixty four. I think. Yeah. And so, he yeah, well, he deserves to be there with the rest of them. Depends when Smash Bros. One came out, I guess. Actually, but I'm kind of I find I it like... kind of remarkable he wasn't in that either. Yeah, but I mean, he wasn't directly a Nintendo thing, right? Because in Smash, no, I but neither that's was true. Well, no, everyone in the original Smash roster was straight Nintendo linked, right? Yeah, but I feel like Rare at that point was only pretty much a Nintendo developer. Yeah, but there's still a third party developer, you know. Yeah, I guess, Whereas, I guess like, maybe everything else maybe was the first commu- party. Oh, and you know what? They pr- they had some bad blood with Nintendo at that point too. Oh yeah, because of the boop thing and the yeah. So you know yeah. Maybe it wouldn't have happened. Anyway, yeah. Banjo deserves to stand up there with the rest of the Smash Bros. crew, and I'm glad he is. Now, that leaves only, what, two more DLC characters after this? Uh, I believe so. I am I got the Fighter's I, Pass, so I'm just I waiting to see I literally have no are. idea who they are. Uh, Dante, I'm betting fucking I will put 40 bucks down right now that Dante you know, gets da- in. Dante would be great. And I would I'm... love to see the design they go for for dante oh they better go with dmc5 dante I, I dmc5 accept. dante would be fucking cool but honestly i wouldn't fucking complain if all the dmc versions of dante oh yeah if you just had the costumes there. that would be fine i'd That'd like his fine. default to be a nicely redesigned version of dmc1 dante to be honest though uh i'd take dmc3 over dmc1 i like just the in terms of design. design yeah i like the dmc3 design i mean we got bayo in I, there so we might as well stick dante too exactly and like they're porting dmc1 to switch for question mark reason i can only assume that it's so it follows the rule that you have to be on a nintendo console to be in smash yeah. oh speaking of dmc being ported to switch and another game being ported to switch fucking final fantasy 8 it's finally being fucking ported to switch they released final fantasy 7 final fantasy 9 final fantasy 10 final fantasy 12 but no 8 and i was wondering why the fuck that was and it was because fuck 8 <laughs> Yeah, but honestly, as somebody who used to really, like, I used to be the one first in line with my ticket on the fuck Final Fantasy VIII train. Like, I was there eagerly holding out my ticket for the guy to come punch it so that I could proudly scream, yes, fuck Final Fantasy VIII, and take my place in the conductor's seat of that train. 
I totally take back everything bad I've ever said about that game because upon critically re-examining the way that it communicates its narrative and who its characters are and what kind of issues happened in the translation that caused me to feel a certain way about that game's story, I've since come around really fucking hard on it. Now, I do have to say that the, the drawing magic system in it is still bullshit. I think that the junction system is crap. It's it's one of the biggest mistakes that Final Fantasy ever made in terms of tweaking its gameplay. But the rest of the game is pretty fucking solid. And narratively, it might be one of the thematically strongest Final Fantasy games. In terms That's of the only just... way to play Triple Triad anymore. Yeah, which is, <laughs> gotta say, the best mini game in the whole series. Yeah. So, you know... That's all I remember about FF8. TBH. I'm I'm gonna play that. And the the port, like, have you seen the remastered graphics on it? It looks uh, beautiful. No, I didn't. It's uh, it. If you look at a screenshot between it on the PS1 and it in the port, holy yeah. fuck, that is a pretty looking game. Like they they did a good job making it look real nice. So that's gonna be fun. And that is, I want to say, Final Fantasy VIII is technically the first modern Final Fantasy game because. Final Fantasy yeah. 7 Final Fantasy 7 to me feels like kind of the last holdover of like the the 16-bit era that ended up on a 3D console. Yeah. But Final Fantasy 8 in my opinion is the first proper modern Final Fantasy. And it has a lot more in common with something like 10 than it does with something like 7. Uh and I got to say as 10 I've been playing it 10, 10 is good. That's a good game. <laughs> Anybody who doesn't like Final Fantasy X doesn't enjoy life and good gameplay. Because the gameplay in that out, game then. is dope. That game is so fucking fun to play. Like, it I has own it, but I've just always... The tightest fucking battle system of any Final Fantasy game, bar none. I do not care what anybody has to say against that. That is the objective truth. That game has a fucking fantastic battle system. One of the best I've ever seen in a JRPG. Yeah, this is the fucking law. You cannot disobey it. But, uh... Anyway, so that shit is good. Um, But anyway, Nintendo, whole bunch of shit. Fucking new Animal Crossing. Finalement. Holy crap. A little weird. It's different. There's a lot of crafting going on. And I don't know how I feel about that. All I have to say is, in terms of... Being a new installment in the series will also... I have to say, New Leaf is a tough game to beat. Mm-hmm. New Leaf is one of the best games Nintendo has ever put out, and I will die on that hill. But topping it would be a fucking Herculean task. So I like that instead of trying to top the game, they've taken the best elements of the game's polish and created a kind of a new experience around it. And I'm into it. I'm not sure how much I'm going to like it when playing it, mm-hmm. but just now, like uh, as my, my pre-gameplay evaluation, I'm interested and they've, they've got me into it. I want to see where it goes. And of course, Animal Crossing on Switch, there's going to be DLC. There's going to be new gameplay shit added in. There's going to be updates. So it's going to be an interesting game to say the least. I don't know if it's necessarily Nintendo taking Animal Crossing into the direction of games as a service, because they kind of already did that with Pocket Camp, and Pocket Camp is still a pretty good game. Yeah. So, I I don't think I'm worried. Yeah, but I mean, that's isn't that Animal Crossing, though? Mm. It gets old fast, but you like what the old is. I don't know. I feel like Animal Crossing... Like, at New Leaf, I... Well, you know what? No. Animal Crossing is a game of... Animal Crossing is a game about routine. Yeah. That's why put, it gets so Put fast. your real life aside for your animal life. Well, you know, it's a game that you, you pick up, you play for, you know, an hour a day, Oof. and you put it back. I have a problem. <laughs> I mean, no, I, I've, I used to play Animal Crossing on GameCube for fucking six hours straight nearly every day throughout, like, the summer. But that's, like, not... That's not really how the developers intend it to be played. And that's yeah. when shit gets old fast. When you're playing it kind of in that almost like the marathon way. But when I played New Leaf, 
I played it so that I, I picked it up. I played for like an hour to two hours every day. I played some games with my friends, visited some houses, did my dailies, uh, and had an g- overall good, relaxing time. It was my wind-down game. Yeah. Well, I, I feel what they hit with New Leaf really good was that you kind of did run out of shit to do at some point. Like, you talked to everyone in your town. Uh, you fished as much as you possibly could, really, uh, within, like, you know... The fact that, like, because, like, you could, if you fish for, like, 15 minutes, you caught pretty much everything you're going to get for the next, mm-hmm. like, two, three hours. Um, the bugs, too, like, they're seasonal and stuff. Uh, you could go to the island, but even that was, like, the same thing where you could fish the maximum and then, like, yep. you're just going to be seeing the same fish. Like, I feel like it hit a really good striding point where, like, you could play for, like, an hour to two hours and do you could everything do you everything to do and then in put that it down. Day. Yeah. And go back the next day. Yeah. Exactly. And you just had to make sure that your favorite neighbor didn't move away while, like, all over the weekend while you were at your friends or something. Exactly. And you and know that what? That happened every single time. That formula was a good formula. Yeah. So if the game... I mean, the I still game go is back on, I mean, to New Leaf sometimes yeah, and, exactly. like, have a great time. And the game is obviously offering up tons and tons of things for you to do. Like, yeah. with like the additional mechanics of mechanic. crafting and building yeah. items and building a town... I, that adds so much more to the fucking game. Like, that's more no that you can do. cloud save, though, for it, which is a little worrying. There's no what? Cloud save. Oh, I don't use the cloud save, so. Yeah, but, like, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not it, troubled by that. It's a game about that. getting things, and, like, if you lose your cartridge or your switch gets stolen or breaks, and then you don't have them no more. You know? I gotta say, as unfortunate as that is... It wouldn't necessarily be Nintendo's fault that that shit happened. Yeah, <laughs> that's but they I, could, I, like the I have, cloud save. The cloud save would also be a good counteract to it, though. You know, this... it, it would, but also like, who are you if you're not compulsively saving your game every like ten minutes? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> who are you, and what have you done with your human brain? Uh, but hey, I'm not. I'm not terribly bothered by that. Other stuff that is coming out that looks really fucking good. Um, Luigi's Mansion Three. Yeah, Gooigi. Put a Holy super fuck. crown on Gooigi. I want it. Gu- I love Gooigi. You know who I, I want love? Gooigi Ed. I want Marius. Mar- oh, get Marius in there. Marius and Gooigi. Mary- well, they are in there, I guess. I like I've... that it's a hotel. That's a cool yeah. setting for a game. I think it's, it's very cool that it's two player now. Yep, that's exceptionally fucking cool. And fully two-player at that. Yeah. Which is something that they did with the the Luigi's Mansion remake on 3DS, uh, which Mm. I really appreciate. Oh, wait, really? The Luigi's Mansion remake is two-player? Yeah, you can... The Luigi exists in that game. You can play it two-player. What the fuck? Which is dope. That's really nice. Yeah, and Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon, a game that I really liked a lot. Yeah, uh, Introduced so many mechanics to the series that is going to make playing it on the Switch even more fun. Yeah. So, Luigi's Mansion 3 looks fucking dope. Like, I cannot wait to get into that. And I'm going to buy my Nintendo Online service soon, and I will be playing that shit online with my coworker Jason or with uh, anybody who wants to play with me. Because that's fun. I, I'm i just excited there's a new Luigi's Mansion. I think yep. that's one of my favorite Nintendo IPs, honestly. Wait, it's so funny, too, because it's when you think about it, when it when it came out, it's not a terribly impressive game as a launch title. It's not very long. It's it got nice graphics and good gameplay, but it lasts literally six hours. Yeah, um, but it's it's but it's fun, fun. and it's it addictive. was it it's was straight very addictive. different than anything uh, Nintendo had done before. Absolutely, and just that's like why how I just, Mario I will... Sunshine is uh, flawed, but flawed different. but very well remembered you know exactly fondly remembered to this day so yeah that i'm so glad that this series has been really seeing a lot of love from nintendo and i'm i'm very happy to report that i will be buying the shit out of that game when it comes out um another one that i'm really fucking interested in i we've already spoken about it but holy fuck the Link's awakening remake yeah it looks so good and god damn everything they show is good Dungeon Builder? Dude. It's like, yes, great. please. Nintendo's really doing this thing where it's like, hey, we made you this game. Now you can also make your own game inside the game and send it to other people, maybe. Yeah, and you know what? Dope. Keep yeah. doing that, please. Boss Rush Dungeon, come at me. I mean, I was I was saying for straight up a long time, 
hey, you got Mario Maker, do a Zelda Maker. But yeah. they they are. They're doing it. So Speaking thank you. Of Zelda, Cadence of Hyrule, Hyrule. Yeah, which is Cadence of Hyrule, now? Crypt of the Necker Dancer, Crossed Hyrule. It is out now. Uh, and it is remarkably good. I have not played a single fucking minute of it yet, though. <laughs> yeah, I've heard I've heard good things. I heard that comparatively to Crypt of the Necro Dancer, it gets a little easier. Uh, but that's yeah. also good because it is not like it's a Zelda game, right? So it's gonna also sell... I, I gotta say, Crypt of the Necro Dancer is a pretty fucking hard game. Toning yeah. down the difficulty is not something I would complain about. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> that game I... is. I have a very good sense of rhythm. Uh, rhythm is the about the only aspect of my musical ability that I'm proud of and will speak proudly of. So I'm good at rhythm games and I'm good at shit like Crypt of the Necro Dancer. I still think that game kicks my fucking ass every time yeah. I play it. It is hard. And so toning down the difficulty, that's all right with me. That's all right. That's good. Please, please do this. Um, uh, yeah. Breath of the Wild 2. What can I say except please... Give me this. Please yeah. give me this game so I can play it right now. I want to play this fucking game so badly. I, I was just like, huh? Unexpected? Well, I was thinking, Breath of the Wild's a pretty fresh game. All the assets and that world is so big. And it's so full, you can put way more in it. Yeah, it only makes sense. Like, it super makes sense, you know? Yeah, I mean, it, I is, just... it is the Majora's Mask Ocarina of Time thing. The I assets are all there. Too. Yeah, I don't know about that. Oh, wait, no, you did get it. It's called Phantom Hourglass, and it's bad. Oh, oh no. <laughs> it is the that, ch- that is the game that is technically a direct sequel. Let's take the freedom of being on a boat and put it on train tracks. Oh, no. 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 I, actually, although, you know, I have to say, as much as I, I'd like to meme on Spirit Tracks, it's a much better game than Phantom Hourglass. Phantom Hourglass is bad. There are some really shitty Zelda games that you forget exist. Yeah, Phantom Hourglass is a... I mean, Phantom Hourglass, everything that's bad about it is improved and polished in Spirit Tracks. Like, the idea of... I guess the main crux of both of those games, the thing that differentiates the gameplay of those games from most other traditional top-down Zeldas, apart from the stylus controls, which are fine, they work okay, is the mechanic of having to return to a... Oh, pardon me return to the same dungeon multiple times over to kind of like do it and do another floor and do another floor like a recurring dungeon essentially that's the thing that separates it from the rest of the series the temple of the ocean king in uh phantom hourglass and the tower of spirits and spirit tracks the tower of spirits is by far a much better designed dungeon than the fan- than the Temple of the Ocean King. I think the Temple of the Ocean King fucking sucks. It is a bad dungeon. It's one of the worst dungeons in the whole series. Mm. Like it's really fucking hard to 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 even stress just how much I dislike the Temple of the Ocean King. It's it's what makes Phantom Hourglass such a bad game. And I think the dungeon design in the rest of the game is is only mediocre. But that aspect of the game brings it fucking down for me. Whereas Spirit Tracks, the train stuff, eh, it's okay. It works. It, it's functional, which is good. But I gotta say... It's the most you can ask for. It's, you know, the, they, they improve the dungeon design in that game. The item design is much better and the use of the items is better. It introduced one of my favorite Zelda items ever, the whip. Which I really like the whip. Um, the whip. And, the whip. I like the whip. It's good. It 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 it's a I think kind of a no brainer Zelda item, and I'm surprised it took them that long to put a whip in a Zelda game. You know, especially because you have like the uh, the grappling hook. Yeah, but they were too focused on the grappling hook. Yeah, like I think the I think the grappling hook is great, but the hook shot is better, and the whip is like a combat item that you can actually fucking use as a combat item more so than you ever could the hook shot you know the hook shot is for enemies that have armor you need to rip off the whip mm. stuns them and then you can sword them which is great so the whip is cool and you can use it as like an item for traversal it's versatile that's why indiana jones has one it's fucking cool but um yeah uh, spirit tracks is okay phantom hourglass is piss and that was technically i guess your wind waker too so <laughs> <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> Do it better. At least Wind Waker got a beautiful remake, though. 
on a yeah. console that nobody likes. <laughs> yeah, are they going to port HD over now? The... They should port that shit to Switch. I, I don't know why they haven't already, actually. There are talks about bringing Wonderful 101 over to the Switch, and I think we talked oh. about it a bit, but they keep getting a little more cemented like oh, every week. Oh, I want this to fucking happen. Because... Yeah, because that's a game that I want to play so bad, but I'm not going to go get a Wii U to play a fucking video game. It's just... I want Like, this. I want... I want I want that ported. I want uh, TMS hashtag FE. Oh, yeah, that game is good. Yeah, it's good, and no one got to play it. Yeah, uh, I think... Who was it that did a video on it that uh, recently came out that I was thinking, oh, shit, I really would like to play that again. Uh, I think it was... Was it Super Butter Buns? I don't know. Somebody on YouTube. But, uh, yeah, Tokyo Mirage Sessions is a very underrated game. And it got way too much hate from, like, a vitriolic fan community. Yeah. That that game is good. Like, it plays really nice. It's got a great battle system. The aesthetics are fucking nuts. I mean, it's like, just SMT meets fucking Fire, Fire Emblem. Emblem like, but in the more... most unconventional manner Yeah, possible. in the, like, what? I don't know. I, I think it's really cool. Like, I love the idea of, a, a, essentially, a Persona game where, where the Personas idols. are Fire Emblems. Yeah. And they're and all yeah, idols. also an idol. Like, what? Come on! This hits all my special interests. How many cocaines did you do while writing this script? Uh, I know, it just looks fucking great. Like, I don't, I don't know why anybody would think that that's stupid. That's fucking awesome. I love uh, it. So, yeah, that would be fucking awesome to play. And I guess, uh... What was left for Nintendo? What left did they have on the docket? I mean, I feel well, like I, mean, we I just got... We haven't kept the docket up for a minute now. We're going to have to start doing that this week for next week when we... Yeah. I feel like I just... I was inundated by Nintendo news so much so that I forget what else is coming out. Yeah, hold on. I'll see. Nintendo oh, well, E3 should we talk about the Sword and Shield list, controversy? I guess. And... Um, sword and shield, but I mean, whatever, nothing really new. So, I mean, um, we got some new information about that. Dynamaxing. Gameplay, it looks a little rough, honestly. It looks fine to me. It looks, um, it looks okay. Like, it looks Astral like it plays Chain, like a Pokemon game. I couldn't uh, ask for anything more. I can go off and on guess what? Next time. Catching Pokemon isn't like Pokemon Go, uh, so that's fine for me. <laughs> like, Pokemon Let's Go, Pikachu, great, and Eevee, I don't even need to stress how much I really I did not, not keep up with games. the gameplay trailer. Or it's anything. the first time in years that I never bought a Pokemon game. That should tell you everything you need to know about it. Whereas, I'm there? definitely buying Sword and Shield. And. I cannot hear you. Technical difficulties strike again. Well, I guess I'll handle this until he comes back. Um, <clears throat> yeah, we talked about Zelda. We talked about, uh, or I talked about Astro Chain, which looks cool. I'm really hyped for a new Platinum game. Um, it's just a fucking JoJo game, honestly. You get stands, and then you can send them away, and then you can get different ones. Oh, sorry uh, about that. All right. Cool, I, I, hello. I totally cut out. Um, yeah. did, you pa- did you pause Audacity? I did not, but... Okay, I, uh, so let's just, keep it going. I, we can, I can just cut that shit out. Yeah, I kind of kept talking anyway, so... Uh, what, I was, what I was saying is, Sword and Shield looks perfectly serviceable as a Pokemon game, and that's yeah. the most I could ask for it, considering that the last Pokemon game that came out was something I was so not fucking interested in playing. Like yeah. I anything that is I will play anything that's not Kanto and I do not fucking care what yeah. it is as long as it's not Kanto please stop shoving Kanto down my throat I'm not fucking interested in Kanto It's pretty tired TBH. Yeah I'm I'm done with that So Sword and Shield I mean the game what I'm most impressed about actually is that the wild area as a concept I think is really cool where you see Pokémon free roaming uh it's fully 3D with a fully 3D camera which is something i would have liked a little earlier from pokemon but now that they're on a you know a proper 3d console they can do that yeah and um i think the game looks like it has the potential to be much better than like x and y uh and on par with the sun and moon which are games that i really like Mm -hmm. um so looks fine the dynamaxing is the big mechanic thing i guess i changed I like it. I like the idea of playing it online with your friends and working together to catch a Pokemon like it's a raid boss. Yeah, I think that's it's neat. 
It's fun. It looks, and of course, the Dynamaxing in gym battles looks fucking crazy. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like I'm just tired of, uh, like, Pokemon trailers. Like, every time I see a Pokemon trailer, I'm kind of like, yeah, okay, I just want to play the game. Well, the trailers are never as good as the final game. Yeah, that's it. But, like, that that's why I said it was kind of underwhelming, because, like, every time I see a Pokemon trailer, I'm like, yeah, it's this, it's the exact same thing every time. S- same kind of trailer. So, I guess yeah. the, the big Pokemon controversy that's been going around online the last week or two uh, is... I guess a, div- a divide on the fan base all over the National Pokedex. Mm-hmm. Uh, I do not fucking give a shit that it's not in the game. <laughs> like, yeah. I, I'm sorry, I'm not a completionist. I don't play Pokemon to completion. And now there are over 1,000 Pokemon. There yeah, is no true. way I'm catching all of it. It is not feasible to ask that you program 1,000 Pokemon into the game. I'm sorry. Especially when you're working on a bigger console that requires more power to push better assets for the other gameplay. Like for other parts of the gameplay, for rendering the world, for yeah. rendering the wild well, area, this, the, uh, trainer the, AI. The Pokemon models were already scaled up in X and Y, which is why X and Y had all those frame drops all the time. Exactly. Like the the games have like Pokemon Sun and Moon, they run perfectly good, yeah. but unless you have 3D on. Well, I never play with 3D. Yeah, no, no one ever does. <laughs> but like, you turn that 3D on, that shit drops like a brick. Exactly. Uh, like I. I don't care. I think every deck should have, like, 300 Pokemon max, and, like, that's a f- reasonable amount, and it's fine. Yeah. But I can also understand the completionist mentality of, like, but I already have all these Pokemon. Just let me shove them into the game. That is the part that I sympathize with, yeah, I guess. because, like, some of the people... Like, I can understand not putting every Pokemon running around in the wild, because there are over a thousand. But not being able to port them kind of sucks, because... Like people worked hard to collect all these things that you made collectible, and but while while the you tagline made... is gotta catch them all, and yeah, well, you know, not anymore. Cause not anymore. Many, uh, but I guess I ha- I guess the only thing I have to say to that is the only thing harder than catching nine hundred Pokemon is making a fucking video game. <laughs> yeah, and sometimes corners do have to be cut. Yeah. People and like pe- people are of... pu- pushing like false narratives about how Game Freak is. Like a lazy company full of lazy developers who aren't doing their work. Guys, Game Freak are one of the hardest working studios in the business. And they if you pump don't, out like a Pokemon game a year. If Come you on. don't <laughs> think that that's good enough for you. And I mean, it has not been a year since Ultra Sun and Moon came out. Those games came out a little while ago. Like they've yeah, been. They, and had, they, they had Let's and, Go Eevee. Exactly. Let's Go Eevee and Let's Go Pikachu were on the docket when the probably before the Switch was announced. No, Where, uh, no, 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 no. Well, yeah, I'd say so. No, the Ju- switch. The switch is old as fuck. I mean, the switch came. The switch was announced when I was in Sejap. I'm three years into university now, four years almost. But, um, like that game, obviously started development around the time the switch was released. Yeah, this yeah, game yeah. has probably been in development for just as long, because it's a completely different game. It's not just an HD remake of the first games with neutered mechanics. This is a completely new game, a new different kind, a different kind of Pokemon game in terms of how it plays, how it renders its game world, how the battle system functions. Like they had to reprogram that shit from the from the fucking ground up, essentially. And that shit takes time. Yeah, and it but takes. I mean, effort. there is also something to be said with the lack of change that the entire series has gone through, which yeah, is one of my biggest gripes with Pokemon. It's just like. I get that's, that, like, if it's not broke, don't fix it, but, like... I don't, I don't think know. it's a question of it not being broke, don't fix it. I think it's a question of, it's a game for children. Yeah. Like, young children. How old were you when you first played Pokemon, and how okay were you at playing Pokemon? Because I was, you know, nine years old, eight years old, even seven, like, younger than that. Mm-hmm. And I was perfectly good at Pokemon. Those games yeah. weren't difficult for me at an age where I had barely ever played another video game. And that's just kind of how the series has always been. And that's true. people need to accept that. Like, it, that's I, true. People ask too much from the, a series that tries to give you as much as it can, but it's also not just for you. And that's yeah. like another thing that I want to say to the Pokemon community. Guys, you've been with the series for a long time. You should recognize by now it's not just for you. 
it's for kids and pokemon kids, is for the children yeah kids okay they like games that are fun that are simple that handhold them at times you know that's the sort of shit that they like it's baby's first rpg it's always been baby's first rpg yeah and you shouldn't miss like it, it was nice that sun and moon were a really big change for the series in terms of formula that was more a gift to the fans than it was to new players yeah that's true. that that those games were for you these games sword and shield let's go eevee and let's go P- pikachu i don't even like those games they're not for me and I can accept that they're not for me. Sword and Shield, it's not for me, but I'm going to play it and I'm going to have a good time. And I don't care that I'm not going to catch a thousand Pokemon. Pokemon. Just has a fucking sword in his mouth. Hey, he's uh, Blade and how Wolf. Cool that is. Yeah, he's Blade Wolf. He's a sword puppy, like in uh, Dark Souls. Yeah, just like the Dark Souls. Is Something this the Dark Souls of Pokemon games. It, well, aesthetically, <laughs> it is a you know European fantasy setting before the apocalypse. Yeah, and it has uh, big big castles with like crazy fucking designs. Yeah. And uh like weird monsters running around all over the place. So, you know, yeah, this kind is, of This is Dark Souls after all the shit went back to normal. Exactly. It's it's uh, uh it's it's Dark Souls when shit was okay. They showed off some of that astral chain too. Okay, that game. That's Ooh, a JoJo boy. game. That's that a is, JoJo game. That's some those things are stands straight Dude. up. They, this is just like Platinum being like, Capcom, please, just please. let us make a JoJo game. Uh, straight just, up. Straight up. Just let and me make it. Look, we did it. You stupid bastards, please let them do this. How have you not let them do this? Please let them do but this. But I'm also super happy that it's an original IP. It looks really oh, cool. Yeah. Oh, it looks uh, absolutely fun as fuck, and I cannot wait to play it. Yeah. Uh, story things came out where, like... Depending on who you pick, I assume that your brother and or twin sister eat it and you have to find them. And that's the whole crux of the story. Um, and you know what? The temporal rifts and whatnot. I don't know. It looks fucking good. I'm buying I, a Switch I, I for say this game. keep it simple. Keep it fun. Yeah. That's what it looks uh, like it is. It looks like everything I want out of a super good polished platinum game. Mm-hmm. So that that's, looks fucking um, dope. We got some silk song footage. Yeah, now Team Cherry as, being crazy as fuck. I'm now maybe this sounds stupid. I don't own Hollow Knight yet. I don't own it. I've never played it. But this week or in the next coming weeks, I will be buying it. I want to try and see if I can find a physical copy. Is is why I've held off so long. Uh, check on uh, Fan Gamer. They have. Well, a... I, I'm going to Toronto next weekend. Okay. Or next, I'm leaving on Sunday for Toronto. And that week I'm going to be there. I'm probably going to go to ANC Games and see if they have Hollow Knight physical. And I'm going to yeah. look around at all the different EB games is around the city. Yeah. So if I, that doesn't work out, let me know. I'll send you a link. <laughs> I would like that. But it looks really fucking exciting. It's uh, if it's on the scale that Hollow Knight was, it's going to be like four different games in one. That's so good because that's it's that's insane. fucking awesome. I these guys I really, are crazy. I really, really do love the aesthetic and narrative of Hollow Knight. I love the gameplay. I love mm-hmm. everything behind it. I mean, Silk Song straight up feels like it was planned to be DLC, and they just kept making more shit, and they were like, oh, fuck, we made a whole other game. Yeah. Oh, straight up. Uh, What else was there? Some Damon X Machina shit looks pretty good. Uh, Panzer Dragoon remake. That was unexpected oh yeah okay so i don't know a whole lot about panzer dragoon could you explain to me if you know what it is what it is uh do you like the shooters of the rail type i like uh i like star fox 64 a lot <laughs> um, i like killer 7 even though panzer, it's not really a rail shooter panzer dragoon is probably uh in your should be probably in your wheelhouse then um it's it's essentially a star fox on a dragon a bit like it plays differently obviously Mm -hmm. but it's Um, basically star fox on a dragon yeah from what i can remember i was very young when i owned it because i know that there's one of them that's like an rpg is that panzer dragoon legend or something uh I don't remember which there's, one that is. There's one of them that's like a straight up, like almost like a, a turn-based RPG kind of game 
with yeah. Panzer Dragoon. And that's kind of what I always thought Panzer Dragoon was. But then I saw the trailer and I'm like, wait, is this like Star Fox? A little bit. Okay, so that's bit. what it is. Yeah. Uh, okay. As far as story goes, I can't remember. I was very young when I played it because um, it was on a, it was for Saturn, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, so I played it at a friend's house and like that was pretty much it. I can't believe you had uh, a friend who had a Saturn. I know. That's fucking crazy. I know. I can't believe I had a friend who had a Saturn and Panzer Dragoon, but... Yeah, no, and both of them at that. That's kind of fucking crazy. Well, I'm excited for that then, because I'm thoroughly interested in playing a fantasy-flavored Star Fox. Fantasy-flavored like, Star Fox. That's, that sounds absolutely up my fucking alley, because I like those kinds of games a lot, actually. So that seems pretty exciting. I'm, I'd love to play that. There's a new mana game. Yes. Now that is also, that's up my alley for sure. Because yeah. I love the mana series. I, Secret of Mana is real good. And, you know, I had the worst ever introduction to it because the first mana game I ever played was Children of Mana. Oof. Which is basically, what if Secret of Mana but Mystery Dungeon? And yeah. it's not And it's not good. Like, that game is not good at all. Even though it's developed by Brownie Brown, who I think make good games. Because uh, Brownie Brown did Magical Star Sign, which is a game that yeah. I really like a lot. Well, I mean, look, Platinum made that Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game that no one likes to talk about. Mm, that's true. <laughs> the one with like the weird aesthetic to it, too. Yeah. Where they looked kind of like little weird men. That was... That <laughs> and was... there's a... <laughs> yeah. Just remembering what they looked like in that. Jesus Christ. Yeah, I don't, don't think about it. Just yeah, they seems were best little... to forget. That was a little rough. So, yeah, I mean, that's that was a good E3, huh? Yeah. I mean, we in terms of being somebody who likes and owns a Nintendo console, I'm very satisfied. Don't know about the people who aren't on that Switch Flex, though. Yeah, like, I'm I'm envious of the Switch Flex right now, because that lineup... I mean, it's all kind of in the distance, so it's fine, I have time, but oof. Yeah. Uh, there's like, that Dark Crystal game that looks pretty alright, too. Oh, yeah, the Darty-esque like, Dark Crystal. It's weirdly interesting tactics game there's a new contra that looks fucking weird i didn't see that at all there's a new you didn't see the contra no i didn't see contra you um yeah it's called rogue 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 corpse contra rogue 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 core yeah (laughs) contra points uh uh Mm -hmm. not now i know i know contra contra points just put it in a, a new video today contra switch i guess yeah it Let's looks, uh, it's a very strange aesthetic, but it's a Contra game. I'll be the judge of that. I like uh, the Contra game that's on the DS. That's the one that I've played. I like that one a lot. Mm. Uh, this is, is it Contra 4, I think, isn't it? I believe so. Whoa, this is, yeah, yeah. you're right. Yeah, it's a, it's a strange direction. A brave new world, if you will. There's a bear. There's a panda bear with a gun in this. Yep. What is this, Tekken? I, you know, at this point... There's a lady with, uh, there's a lady with blade legs. Yep. There's Uh, big buff America man. Yeah, there's the buff America man. There's a a worm person. And did he just pick up a fucking helicopter blade and fly by spinning the helicopter blade? Like he just had a separate helicopter blade and picked it up and and flew using that? It's fucking insanity. You know what? That, I don't know, but I... You know what? To... Uh, yeah. Contra, good. Con- here we go. Contra, to game of the year. That that looks really, really fun. First. That looks really fun. I- I'm gonna I'm gonna want to play the shit out of that, actually. Yeah, it looks, it looks great. Well, I guess uh, then that's something that I have to keep on my radar, because I, I like uh, the, the Contra games that I've played. Not a ter- I'm not terribly big into run-and-gun kind of games, except for, like, Mega Man. Uh, yeah. but, uh, Contra, uh, yeah, I like Contra. I like how they Contra play. Contra do good. I like Contra and I like Metal Slug. That's about the extent of my run and gun knowledge, but, um, I am, uh, <laughs> uh, but, um, oh, no. <laughs> that was a good E3 for yeah. me. I don't know so yeah. much about people who aren't on the Switch, but for me, not, not I mean, perfect. I'm excited to see gameplay of all the games I'm excited for. Yes, and God, Breath of the Wild 2, give me more Nintendo, please. Put it in my ass. No, tell me less. Just tell me, give me the game when it comes out and tell me nothing. That's what I want. Mm, you know what, actually, that sounds pretty good, too. You can do, you can do just just put it out quickly, please. Please, yeah. please, Ninty, please. 
please, my friends. I would like this. Give it to me raw. Yeah, give me to me raw, daddy. Please. (laughs) So yeah, that looks fucking interesting. I'm I'm really really hoping that uh, all of those games that I'm excited for actually, you know, come out being super fucking great because they definitely are promising. Um, I guess that's it for the E3 retrospective. Yeah, and I think that's a that's an episode right there. That's 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 pretty good. I think we 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 we, didn't uh, have weeks, so we could just exactly. I mean, next next week or whenever. Not next week because I'll be in Toronto. The week after, and and uh, my partner will be here. We can uh, fucking do one all together again. Yeah, except no one heard no one heard the one we did all together. Exactly. That's that's the last episode. The the prop the proper one that we can all do together for your partner is still. Up for debate. Uh, yeah, there we if, go. Nobody if knows the his existence name yet. is there yet. Uh, but he will be on the podcast, and it'll be fun. So, yeah. uh, and we can talk about a lot of the shit that we we did in Toronto, and we can talk about our weeks and how wh- what we've been doing the last couple months, whilst also you know trying yeah. to trying to get through life, Just cr- crawling through this grinding it it has been quite quite the past couple months i think i mean i yeah i got my ass kicked by school so i'm just glad to be out of school right now i moved have a child and started a new job so it was it was a time exactly we've been pretty fun and i've been working fucking huge shifts at my work too so yeah i think we've uh we've done done quite done quite well for ourselves but now we have time to kind of do some other stuff and that's gonna be good uh, but anyway, thanks for listening to our Very Lady 3 recap. Yeah, uh, sorry it's so late. Sorry it's been no, so long. Next next one will come <laughs> sooner. Yeah. We're sorry in the sense that we're sorry you had to wait long. We're not sorry because of why we had to wait. We're more sorry that everything we talked about is a little less relevant than... Than we would have hoped when it been. was. Yeah. But uh, there's plenty of other shit to discuss later. Won't be relevant, but it'll be stuff that we did. And I did a lot of good stuff. And I watched a lot of good movies and TV and sh- shit like that in the last couple months. So I have a lot of that to talk about. Uh, and yeah. I I did see a movie that I still in my mind is far better than anybody is giving it credit for. Which is Godzilla King of the Monsters. I need to go see that still so we can talk about that uh, next podcast. Yes, because that... I'm am just going to I'm just going to say I have some words all good about that movie. Mm-hmm. Uh that is mm, I hate how it's been dragged cuz that movie is supremely supremely more intelligent and depth and thematically deep than anything anybody is giving it credit for being and that makes me really upset. Um but, I don't know. The tagline of you can't just have two and a half hours of giant monster WWE matches is sold. Like, I'm and there. The fact is, that's not even what the movie was. Yeah, it was better I than figured two, as much. It was even better than that. <laughs> like, there, there's, you know, themes. Almost like the first Godzilla movie was kind of about war, you know? Kind of about the detrimental effects of nuclear bombs. No, nah, don't worry about it, though. No, no, that's... No, Godzilla movies don't have themes. What, Shin Godzilla is not about uh, how America is a terrible country and interventionism and the politics of intervention are disgusting? What? No, we don't... No, no. These movies aren't supposed to be political or intelligent. They're Just not like political. the division. They're not, yeah, they're not capable of being political, right? Art isn't capable of having a deeper meaning or themes. Keep politics out of art. Great, like, now art, your art exists, art exists in a vacuum and there's no politics no. or there are clearly politics there and we refuse to see them so anyway i have shit to say about that movie all of it good i have shit to say about dozens of other movies than tv shows that i've seen like uh the one that from nicholas winding refn that just came out too old to die young which is a, an amazing tv show i think one of the best television series of the year oh we gotta uh, talk about the neon jellyfish evangelion Yikes, also, I have words to say about that. Uh, yeah. and all of them bad. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, not all of them bad. One of them good, everything else bad. But yeah, we have stuff to talk about. So uh, until next time, folks, uh, maybe you'll get a bonus round in between uh, this and the next episode. Uh, yeah, if we have we time to squeeze, to, it in, uh, to squeeze a 20 minute something. bonus round in at some point, maybe one of these evenings, uh, just so that we have How something. How long were to... the other ones? Like 42, 30? We got to make them all 42, 30. Yeah, ab- 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 about. <laughs> Yeah, they 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 end up being around the same time, 
So, uh, yeah, so we'll, uh, we'll try and see if we can get another one out for the week that I'm not here. And then the week that I'm back, we will have a new one coming for you. So until then, folks, thank you very much for listening to Game Punks. And thank you for sticking with us if you have. Welcome back. Yes, welcome back to both of us. Shit, life sucks. Video games, though. We're gonna do it.